this with, with my students. This is like a virtual museum. And so it's not really a book, um, but it is another way to, um, to use a Google tool. And um, we do have permission from David Lee to use his template. And just as long as we make sure that we let him know that we, um, or let everybody know that we're getting everything from him. And basically, it's a museum, and you can, you go into this, it's pretty, pretty blank at the beginning, and then you can click on any one of these rooms, and like that's the curator, so you can add the students' names, a description of it, you go back to the museum, the lobby, you can go to a different room, and you can upload things. You can upload artifacts. You can have each room from you know a different student. They can um, can upload pictures. You can upload videos. You can do green screen presentations. But um, this is a really, really, really nice um, nice template that he has created. So there's all sorts of different different rooms that you can go to. It's kind of, slides go through this real fast. So, and it just basically shows you how. And the concept between um, using Google Slides for, for a virtual museum and an electronic book and those interactive books is basically the same. It's once you, when you're into creating it and you click on a, um, a slide to go to a link, you can say, oh, I want to go to another slide in the slide deck. And that's how it, it bounces back and forth. So that's, that's the uh, technique for doing the Jet Jeopardy games and any other kind of games. So those are three really... Um, you're back. Back. Why is it? I thought my my computer was sensitive. <laughs> so um, there are some other tech tools that you can you can use. The really neat thing about all these tech tools is that if you are on your Wake ID, you can click on any one of these. Um, you can go to Kite. Well, you can click on any one of these links, and it'll take you to Kite Learning. And if you haven't discovered Kite Learning, you need to go go to it. It's it's on, it's on the Wake ID um, when you get on that whole Canvas thing. And it is a place where you can go and do some professional development um, by yourself. And um, you can spend 15 minutes or an hour and a half and you can go through um, tutorials and um, come up with some more digital literacy credits. Um, I mean, I think I've gone through like 16, 18, there's like hundreds. There are hundreds of them you can do. And like I said, some of them are really short, some of them are quite long. And what's really cool about any of these is that you can go and go in, do the tutorial on this, and go, yep, I want to use this, no, I don't want to use this, and then um, you're happy. So um, Book Creator is something that, um, that Cindy has talked about. It is, um, it's pretty much, you know, it's, it's pretty much you create your book and then send it off to be, um, be published. Um, pages, and that's the same as Story Jumper. Um, pages on iPad is a real simple um, app to use. Well, the, the thing with um, Book Creator is if you, if you use it on your Chromebooks, it's free, right? Mm -hmm. oh, and then, books, it's um, if you do get on an app, I mean, you do have to pay for the downloading of the app. And I think we talked about it was like $4 or something. Mm -hmm. So it's not really expensive. Um, pages, pages ID is really simple. You can go in, um, you can pull in pictures, add text, add narration. Um, at STOW, we have a, a third grade teacher who is experimenting using that and um, making some audio books for her for her classroom to use. 
Um, so, Do Ink. Um, Do Ink is one of one of our favorites. It's favorite at, at probably every school I've been at in the last couple of years. It's a basic, real simple green screen um, um, application. And um, basically you have the green screen in the back. You can put in pictures. Your students can do videos um, in front of it and then project what you want. I think the one thing you do have to remember is that they can't have this giant they can't be wearing any green because if they do, then whatever is projected in the background is also projected on their body. On their body. So um, it's a great, um, a great app to have. Story Jumper is a lot like um, Book Creator. Um, ski, uh, screen Castomatic. Has anybody used that? Anybody used that one? Yeah, it's a really cool way where you can um, add your voice over to what's going on with um, um, on your computer and so you can create tutorials for your students. We use that a lot um, and attach it to um, our Google Classrooms because it's one of those deals where if you are um, demonstrating something for your students and then, then you put them on computers and all of a sudden they're going, what do we do? What do we do again? And then they can go to Google Classroom, they can get on the screen Castomatic, and it will, um, you know, play the whatever it, all the instructions for them all over again that, that you've loaded for them, and that, um, and they can just refer to it as many times as as they want. So it's kind of a, a really neat tool to have. Um, Book Track Classroom. Has anybody anybody know that? That is something that we kind of found. Um, and it's just kind of, it'll take, if you're doing a book, it'll kind of take your book to the next level because you can add soundtracks to the back, to the, um, to the book, to the background. And what's really neat about that is as you are reading, um, your boy, as you're reading your book and creating this, this product, product um, if you find that the music is going too fast or too slow, you just have to tap on the word and it will sync with you. And as you're turning pages, it syncs with you, and then it'll catch up with you and slow down as you want. There's a lot of, um, of um, music already in there. I think um, you can go in and find Peter Pan and um, read Peter Pan and have him do that. Uh, Flipgrid, has anybody done Flipgrid? That was a big thing a couple, couple of years ago um, with us. I know every week we um, got really big. We really um, delved into that. That's a really neat thing if you're communicating with um, students in classrooms in places where like some of my best friends are teaching out in California where I used to teach, but their classes don't meet the same time my classes meet. And so it's a really neat way for me as the teacher to present something to the students and have the students go ahead and do their own video. And then it shows up as a grid, all the students that do it, you can click on each one to do it. But I can share my code with um, a teacher friend in um, California, and she can have her students answer the question, or read, or do something, and then come back. Um, and so we have that communication, even though we're time zones apart. So just some tools, like I said, if when you're on your Wake ID, you click on any of those links, it'll take you right to Kite Learning. Um, real quick, making connections. Um, that's a link to ePals e that Cindy has talked about that she uses. Um, Skype in the classroom is is pretty similar to that. Um, Global Read Aloud. Has anybody done Global Read Aloud? Global Read Aloud. Um, I got from uh, one of my media center coordinators, and um, I joined last year because my fifth graders read a long walk to water and um, I joined the Facebook page and I had the opportunity to link with other teachers from across the world who were also reading the global read aloud so um, and it's really cool go ahead never mind Never mind. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, you can you can click on global. Hello. You can click on global read aloud. Um, the purpose was to have students read and then to talk about talk about their reading with other with other students. 
Um, I had, I, because I teach AIG, I use the upper elementary ones, um, but there's also preschool books you can use, um, and um, I think there's a second and third grade uh, novel study you can do. And then there's one called Global Buddies, and the, I don't know a whole lot about that, but I know that the purpose of that is to um, make connections, and there's a lot of ways where you can make connections with people and um, through interactive activities. So, um, and I know that, you know, if you're making a connection um, to somewhere you don't know, that's, that's probably the most intimidating part, wouldn't you say? Yeah. To do, to do it. So here are some ways that you can start. All right. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. You got two. Okay. <laughs> so we already talked about Google Classroom. You're on Google Classroom. We're, we're going to keep this up here. You can um, share resources on Google Classroom. Uh, my resources on, are on Google Classroom. You can click on ESL Toolbox Team Drive. If you have not already sent a request to me to be put on, you can do that. Do you need digital learning CEUs? Well, you can get it because you're here today. And uh, now you're getting you're getting ESL credit for this, but we have some online assignments that you can do, and you can earn half of a CEU for digital learning competencies if you need to do that. Sign up for this course before December 14th, because I think that's when we've got the close date for the course. And then um, there's a feedback form we're going to have you do now in just a minute in here that's your first ass online assignment the, and then the other two online assignments are in google classroom so i'm going to show you those in google classroom in just a minute okay let me show you right now because the next thing in your slide is um the next thing is the form to fill out so we want to go to google classroom and i got to get it up here I want to show you the assignments. Okay. So the authentic learning, um, global learning that you're in, if you click on classwork, here's our assignments. Okay. The presentation is here, right here. When if you want to, anytime you want to see it, click there, bring it up. Anytime you want those links that we put in there for you, bring that up. And then we have a Padlet for you. That's your first online assignment. And the questions here are to give an example of how you implemented global learning and how it impacted your students. Anybody here ever used a Padlet before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know it's super easy. You just click somewhere on the Padlet for the title. That's where you're going to put your name. And then you write about your example of how you used it in the classroom and how it impacted your students' learning. You can go back and edit it. You can delete it. And, um, but after you do that, that's your, that's your first assignment. And then the second assignment is to explore the ESL toolbox. So I would like for everybody to find something that you think is interesting or useful on the ESL toolbox. And I would like for you to upload something to the ESL toolbox, because once I give you um, access to it, you will be a content manager, which means you can create your own folders, you can put stuff in it. And I really, really, really encourage you to do this because um, we all do cool stuff, but we should share <laughs> so we can all use the cool stuff and, uh, and, and get ideas from each other. So this is the collaboration piece that I talked about in the content objective at the beginning, is I would really like to see us um, taking this opportunity to collaborate um, digitally. So after you do that, after you upload something and explore something, there's a Google form that you can complete and that will um, be your three assignments to get your online credit. So, okay, so Is does there a due anybody date? have any questions? Is there a due date for the assignments? I have not made one and I was just thinking about that this morning. I think I'm going to make it be um, like January 15th because that'll give us a nice long time to do it, but it won't drag on so long that I'll forget to give everybody credit. <laughs> so let's say January 15th, and I'll add that to the Google Classroom so that you all know that that's when we need to finish it if you want to do that.